Hi and welcome to Reaper TV. In this video I'm going to give you 5 power tips from working with Easy Drummer 2 from ToonTrack. So let's crack on with tip number 1 right now. So let's kick this video off with how ToonTrack actually deal with the articulations of each of the drums that are being used. So what they did when they record each sample is they take multiple passes at it and then they'll build up a bank of multiple different samples of the same piece of the kit being hit in different times. So what that'll do is that'll give it a more human element. Now you may not always want that or you may want to have some control over it and we can do that quite easily. All we need to do is come over to the menu on the right hand side, come down to settings and choose sound engine. When we do that, you can see that opens an option for the humanize element, and this is how it deals with every hit. So what we can do is we can choose from on, which will humanize every single time the drum is done, the easy X optimization, which is basically humanize it, optimize for each drum, or we can turn it off completely so every sample will always be the same. So if you wanted that sort of machine gun type of effect or you wanted to have a more digital type effect, then you can use that. Very quick and easy, and you can apply that to every single instance of Easy Drummer 2. So there's your first tip, how to deal with humanizing the sound of your drums. Now next up is whenever you're dealing with the song editor or dealing with blocks of the MIDI that comes with Easy Drummer 2, when you drag and drop that into your host, your door, then what you find is you'll have two instances of that playing. And if you make a change to the one that's in your door, then obviously they're going to have discrepancies. And this can just be a little bit annoying. But one of the things you can do is quite a useful little tip is when you build your songs up, so let's just go through and quickly build something up. It doesn't really matter what it is. We just build the songs and we'll just quickly put something together so we can have something to work with. So let's just build these up. There we go. And we'll put an outro in there and we'll do that. So now what we can do is we could select that and we can drop that into our digital audio workstation. So we can do that by simply just dragging that over, dropping it in there, and now the MIDI is available to us inside our door. Like I said, the problem is we can start playing this back and we'll get two instances because Easy Drummer will play with that song and your door will play with that song. So let's take a listen to that to see exactly what I'm talking about. So as you can see, we end up with a crazy loud version of that where we've got two instances of the MIDI playing back. So let's just disable that warning. What we can do is we can easily come over to this and we can just select all the elements that build up our song and then we can just right click and we can say mute. That will now mute the instance of that MIDI inside Easy Drummer 2. So when we play it back now, we only get the MIDI playing back from our door. Now that in itself is pretty cool and pretty useful, but what we can also do with this, let's just say we made some changes to the MIDI and we made a complete and a mess of it. Well, if we didn't have this instance of Easy Drummer with the MIDI muted in there, we'd have to rebuild that song piece by piece, hoping we get all the same pieces in there together so everything is back as it was originally. But by muting these, we can easily just delete what's in our door, and then we can unmute these just by selecting them, right click and unmute. Then we can drag and drop that back in there, and we've got the original MIDI all ready to carry on working with, and we can just do the same again. We can just select all these, right click, and mute. So what that gives us is it gives us flexibility that that song structure is always in place in Easy Drummer 2, sitting in the background, should we need to call it back up to make changes or just drag and drop it back in there. So again, another useful little tip when you're working with Easy Drummer 2's MIDI libraries. So next up, I want to take a look at when we're working with multi-channel routing with Easy Drummer 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop an instance of Easy Drummer 2 into Reaper. So let's drag and drop that in there. And you can see the first thing it does is saying, do you want to build this routing configuration? I just got to go through and create the multi-channel version of it. Now I've got a video dedicated to this entire process and I recommend checking that out if you want to know a bit more about it. But for now, let's just say, yes, we wanted to do that. You can see that now opens up Easy Drummer and creates all the channel routing for us. So it's nice, quick and easy. So we've got everything in place, which we can then go through and name all these the relevant kit pieces, which just makes life a lot easier and a little bit more sense. But the other thing we can do now is if we go back in and open up Easy Drummer, 
So let's just open the interface back up. We can now go into the mixer and we can configure this to lay out exactly how we want it to be laid out. Now let's just go and choose the kit that I want to work with. So let's just choose made of metal and we're going to, sorry, tell a light. Let's go through and metal machine and we're going to go to big room. And that gives us a whole range of different tracks that we can work with throughout a mixer. And you can see by default, everything is routed through to track one. In this instance, that would be easy, easy, easy one. So all we need to do is just select this and just choose multi-channel and that'll automatically set up the default routing, which is great. Like I say, the other video I've got will give you a lot more detail on this. But what you can see is that we've also got some tracks that are completely useless to us. So let's just say, for example, that we don't want to use any of the shakers or tambourines or the percussive kind of uh, pieces on there. We can route other drums through to that to give us more channels we can work with. And the benefit of having more channels is the fact that we can then EQ and compress and do effects and things on individual drum components on their own individual dedicated track. So instead of, as we have at the moment, where we've got Rack Tom 1 right the way through to Floor Tom 2, all being routed through Track 5, if we want to make changes to each one of those individual toms, we can route them to the individual uh, tracks, and then we can do whatever we want to those individual tracks, levels, muting, you know, all kinds of things. So what I'd always recommend is whatever kit you're working with, get rid of the things that you don't want to work with, like in this example, the one shot, the shake and the tambourine, and use those tracks to route other instruments, other component pieces of your drum kit through it to give you more options when it comes to mixing and levels and tweaking everything. And the other thing I would highly recommend, when you're working with Easy Drummer 2, you always have a track that's dedicated to reverb. So you can see in this instance, it's track nine, and that's routed through track nine. Well, I would say you're probably better off having a dedicated side chain that deals with the reverb. And the reason I say that is because as a general rule of thumb, like I say, everything is subjective, but as a general rule of thumb, you want the reverb for all of the instruments in your particular session to be all the same kind of time, using the same reverb, the same delay rate, the same room size, and so on. Otherwise, you can end up with some really kind of crazy effects where the reverbs are all out of time with each other and just make an absolute mess of the sound. So don't use the reverb track that's dedicated in inside Easy Drummer, set up your own track and apply your own reverb to it that you can then route all the different component pieces of your audio through that to make sure they're all using the same ambient um, reverb. Now again, I've got a video on this which I'll link in the description below that'll show you all about the reverb and how you can do this. It's very quick and easy, but it gives you more options. Now, as you may know, when you're using Easy Drummer 2, you can still load in the EasyX expansion pack from Easy Drummer 1. So you have a whole bank of different sample libraries you can use to create your drum sets. Now, one of the problems you find is that the earlier versions or the earlier EasyX for Easy Drummer 1 don't necessarily have the same flexibility as the newer versions. But because we can load them into any of our kits and we can create custom kits and we can do a lot of things with it, there's a great way of making sure you open up some extra flexibility. And I'll cover this in a little bit more detail in the next tip where we look at creating a custom kit to use this. But what I want to show you first of all is, as you can see, this kit is a pretty monstrous looking kit. We've got five toms, two kicks, a snare and umpteen cymbals. But if we jump over to the mixer section, We've got a pretty basic mixer layout on there. You can see we've only got about eight different sections that we can work with, and we've only got an equalizer. Now, if we jump over to take a look at another EZX from Easy Drummer 1, something like the metal, and we'll come down to, it doesn't really matter which one we choose, you can see we've got a few more tracks in there, but we still don't have as many as we have available to us, the full 16, when we're working with more of the new EZXs. But there's a great way that we can cheat with this. We can easily go over to one of our other kits. Let's just say we want to use Metal Machine and we'll go back into the big room one, the one I tend to use, where we've got the full 16 channels that we can work with. What I can do is I can create a custom kit that pulls in all the different elements from any of the Easy X1 expansion packs, and I can then map those up using the same methods I showed earlier or in the other video that deals with how you can do multi-channel. So we open up a whole range of additional options that we benefit from using the Easy X2 expansion packs, but loading in the samples from the Easy X1s. So that's a great way of giving yourself more control over earlier different sample packs. So try it out and see what I mean. 
So in this final tip, I want to expand upon what I just covered in tip number four, which is dealing with those earlier EZX expansion packs. So we've got a kit that's an EZX2, and you can see everything is laid out. And if we jump over to the mixer, we've got a whole range of different options available in there. So what we can do is if we come back to the drum section, we can now go through and customize this and pull in any of the different drum elements from any of the expansion packs we currently have installed. So let's just say, for example, that I want to pull something in from the expansion pack for Metalheads because I like the way that sounds. But that's pretty easy to do. So all I need to do is come over to the particular drum component that I want. Let's just say I want the toms. I can just simply come down, click on the little arrow, and I can now go through and create a custom kit. So you can see I've got all the different drum elements from the kit that we're working with at the moment, which is Metal Machine. But I can easily expand that out and choose from any of the expansion packs I've got installed. So I can come down to Metalheads. And you can see there's my rack tom one, two, three, floor tom one, floor tom two. So you can see now I could easily build this up. I say I'll have the sonar. And I'll do the same again there. We'll just go to the next kit. So I say, yep, that's fine. Go to the next tom, do the same thing on there. Choose the different expansion pack, metal heads. Come down to rack tom two. Close that down. And do the same then for rack tom three. So what we're doing is we're building this custom kit up. We now have the flexibility that this is being loaded into an EZX2 expansion pack that we could then come through into the mixer area. And what we can do now is I can say that I want my Rack Tom 1 to go through to channel 5, my Rack Tom through channel 6, Rack Tom 3 to channel 7, take out any of the tracks that I don't want. So, for example, like we said, we don't want reverb, so we can free that up if I want to. I can just ignore that completely, just mute that out. And I can do the same with the one shot. I can just get rid of those. I can just say, well, I'll have different things routing through to the different channels. So I don't want that to be using anything. So I can easily now build up that kit the way that I want. I can create a completely customized kit from any of the EZX expansions. I can route it out the way that I want to using the multi-channel router setup inside Easy Drummer 2. And then once I've done all that, I can simply come over to my... Uh, sort of drum section on the right hand side and I can come up to that and I can say that I want to set as a user preset so I can come onto there and I can say save as and then I can give that a name so I've got a custom preset all set up for me and I can load that in the same as any of the other presets that I've done in the past so I'm benefiting from creating completely customized kits pulling in easy x1 easy x1 expansion samples using those inside an easy x2 expansion giving me extra different channels that I can work with in the mixer and give me a whole range of extra options available just by using a little bit of logic and a little bit of sort of playing about with the way that easy drummer 2 works well, I hope you found these five power tips for Easy Drummer 2. I hope there's been some things in there that you picked up on that you didn't know about. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. If you like what we do around here, please consider supporting us on Patreon. The link is in the description below, and your support is much appreciated. And it means that we can put out more content more regularly to give you more insight and information into getting great recordings in your home recording studio. Well, until next time, happy mixing.